Hello, this is Pastor Terry Goodman, and I want to welcome you to the Wesleyan Connection. This podcast is primarily for the clergy and laity of the Holston Annual Conference. Join with me now as I take a look around the Connection and share some of the things happening in the churches of our annual conference. This is another one of those episodes from a recent meeting of the Big Stone Gap district leadership team. And in this episode, a couple of us sort of get personal and begin to talk about ministry, the why of ministry, uh, the role that laity play in ministry. Uh, We also talk a little bit about worship, or actually, if you listen closely, you might recognize the voice as mine, as I sort of give my monologue for the importance of worship. But uh, this is one of those episodes that's hard to pin to just one topic. But I think that the conversation will make you pause and ponder and think about your own ministry, why you do the things you do, the the importance of laity in ministry, and how they can uh, make or break a church, really, uh, with their ability to, to jump in and take over and provide the, the leadership that's necessary. And so I encourage you to, to listen to this episode, and from it I believe you will get uh, an idea or two. So sit back, and here's what we were talking about. This year has worn me out, you know, just to put it bluntly. And it's caused me to really reevaluate my ministry and ask, you know, the why. You know, what am I doing? And as I've answered that, you know, I've had to ask, you know, if this is the why, you know, what am I doing to really address that? And, you know, one of the things that's come out of it is, you know, I try to centralize all of my ministry. You know, I try to centralize my pastoral care. I try to centralize this. And I've begun to realize no wonder I'm worn out because I can't do a centralized stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just not working. So, you know, I'm starting to focus more upon my leaders. You know, hopefully, you know, that'll carry over as they're going over to there. You know, but as I'm doing that, I'm thinking about questions. You know, I'm asking them, you know, why are you doing this? You know, what, what's your vision? What, you know, you know, and just, just, you know, bring it to them. So, you know, that, that, yeah. that's, how, that's, that's how, I don't know whether that's going to do it or not, you know, because I'm just now kind of trying my best to listen to whatever God's doing here. No. It's been a year of introspection for me too, shall we say, uh, having to sit back and uh, turn the reins over to let them do things for those. You know, April. I really didn't start getting back into the swing of church till end of July, first of August, and to let. And I'd been preaching on the fact that you know I'm just here to equip y'all. Y'all need to do the work. And they started doing the work. <laughs> didn't necessarily do it the way I would have done it, <laughs> but they did. The, but they took off and they did the work, and so that's something that you know. I'm, 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 I'm learning. I've got to relinquish the control and trust the Lord to get us to where we need to do. But I, in, in in terms of relinquishing the control, I also realize that there are too many competing visions. Yeah. There's no single unifying vision, and, and that's something that I saw even before this happened. Uh, that you know, when there were previous issues in, in, in the church in the years prior to my coming, uh, the laity stepped forward. Good, strong laity, but you had this group, and you had that group, and you had this group, and all these. They started going and leading, but they weren't leading from a central from a central place and uh, that's it's that central place that, that I think is important mm-hmm. to try well, to get to yeah I think Lane <clears throat> the Baptist Church becomes kind of its own parable that you know it's not that we you know taking the flame out of the church in itself is not a big deal but taking the flame out of the church is a reminder that we are the flame that's going out of the church is a big deal. Mm-hmm. Um, like doing that. a hanging of the green as a, as a as an honoring of that beginning of Advent is powerful. Mm-hmm. Doing a hanging of the green to get stuff hung up in the church and just is, call it a hanging of the green. Yeah, yeah and calling it the hanging of the green mm-hmm. is 
so what? You know, and, and I think we've gotten into doing doing it because somebody else did it or because it led to something bigger someplace else or because without that underlying vision, it becomes kind of, oh, well, yeah, of course we're going to do da 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 because we've always done it that way and because, but we not because this 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 leads us to the vision or this, this I think, back into the vision I mean it goes back to to basically where, where we kind of started with all this you know most of our ministries were started by grandparents possibly even great grandparents mm-hmm. you know what does my papa Roy have to do with what I'm doing now <laughs> you know and I don't mean that in a mean way I love yeah, my papa just, yeah. but I mean yeah. you know papa was was pretty close to fundamentalist Baptist, you know, and he and I had some very interesting conversations. <laughs> uh, you know, that was his style. That is not my style. I can't do it that way. Mm-hmm. You know, and I got a feeling a lot of people in the church are the same way. You know, it's just like, you know, it's why you know one of the big big things that we've that I've had conversations with is Sunday night. Like <coughs> Sunday nights are a dying breed. You know, and I, you know, if I had my gun, I'd put it out of its misery. You know, be but, careful oh I know it's a sacred cow and that's uh, what I keep on running into a friend of mine so, AG has uh, left the ministry pulpit ministry and gone into uh, working at hospice because he did away with Sunday night worship service yeah well I'm there not, wasn't anybody hardly there no yeah. but I haven't tried to do away him. with it it's just you know we've actually We've actually got a fairly easy way of doing it. We've got lay people who lead it for the most part. I have to preach a couple of times a month. But, you know, with that said, I've still got the feedback that says, Preacher, I want you on Sunday night. And I'm like, why? You know, what What are we really accomplishing? What's the service really for? You know? <coughs> I had a woman. I've only had one church that I had Sunday night service at. And it was a contentious church, to say the least. And I get sent there and preach on Sunday morning. Been there a couple of years. And this lady comes up to me and says, You know, if you could learn to preach, we might actually have more people in our church on Sunday morning. <laughs> and I said to her, So you don't think I can preach? Then why do you come hear me again on Sunday night? Well, you preach differently on Sunday night. <laughs> no, I don't preach differently. I preach the same way. You know, there's there's something going on. And... and with that Sunday night kind of thing, but but one of the things I'm hearing is that we talk about vision, we talk about this, but we all we seem to be getting back to worship a lot here, mm-hmm. and you know worship, I don't think is necessarily the place where you can set the grand vision for your church. Worship is the place where you've got to encounter the power and presence of Jesus in your midst, and, and you might be able to instruct. Jeff worked with me for a worship on a worship service. We're all saints Sunday. We were bringing in some compromands and had all kinds of stuff going on. And uh, that was a service that I really, truly felt helped people to understand what it meant to be a part of the church, what it meant to come in through confirmation, what it meant to, to celebrate communion. And people were touched by that service that because we built into it, we took the time to make it a, a service in which they can encounter uh, the power and presence of Jesus in, in a way that they don't normally encounter. And sometimes I, I wish I could have more services like that. But worship, to me, worship is the is the the engine that drives the church. If you can't get them together for worship to experience the power of the risen Christ in your midst then there's a good chance they're not going to experience it any other time during the week. Not as the body. And so for me, worship is is a key uh, to, to this whole thing. It's the power source. It's the, the thing that drives us. This is Pastor Goodman. Thanks for listening to this edition of the Wesleyan Connection. Be sure to check back often for more podcasts.